Hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sonika, and I'm a, I'm a software engineer at Google in the working in the network infrastructure group. And I'm joined by Daniel. Hey, everyone. I'm Daniel. I'm also a software engineer at Google doing tools and infrastructure for networking. Thank you. And we are going to talk about Alpine Sonic Switch Tag Simulation. So we started working on Alpine about a year ago with uh, some goals in mind. Uh, the major theme being uh, how to uh, left shift the sonic switch tag development to catch issues earlier and also to reduce dependence on the hardware test beds. Uh, so we wanted to catch, uh, we wanted to run more and more testing early in the phase and uh, so that we have uh, high quality mainline. So to do that, we needed a sonic virtual switch with a data plane uh, so that we can cover more and more scenarios. And another thing was we wanted a seamless way of integrating vendor simulations into our testing environment. So keeping these goals in mind, we designed Alpine virtual switch. So to look at the high level uh, design of Alpine virtual switch, here you can see we have uh, the layered interpretation of a sonic hardware switch on the left side. On the right hand side is where the Alpine virtual switch stands. Uh, what we have done there is split the sonic software stack into two containers at the side layer. So the top container which you see is in the green is the sonic so, uh, switch stack container and the bottom container is the data plane container in yellow. So the data plane container is where all the vendor specific software reside and also the ASIC simulation pipeline runs in that. Uh, and in the top container, the green container, switch stack container, is that is where the Sonic VM runs and, uh, and all the softest part of the Sonic stack runs in that, which do not need to know what is a vendor uh, underneath. So the separation is at the side layer. So now uh, both of these containers together form the Alpine virtual switch. Now they both get deployed as a single unit uh, in as a Kubernetes pod. We'll talk about how they are deployed in the next slides, but uh, the thing to remember is that Alpine virtual switch is a combination of these two containers and they are deployed as a single unit uh, as a Kubernetes pod. We sometimes refer to it as Alpine virtual switch node as well. So to deploy an Alpine testbed or Alpine virtual switch, uh, we use KNE. KNE stands for Kubernetes Network Emulation. It is a open source software, open source tool to create emulated network topologies in Kubernetes. And uh, this provides us a very simple way of defining the topologies in text protobuf. Uh, it also provides local and cloud deployments. And uh, it, its simple design provides us with the ability to integrate different vendor simulations into the same topology. So what you see here is a simple Alpine testbed, which where we have two virtual switches connected to each other using KNE links. And uh, each of these gray boxes is the Alpine virtual switch we talked about in the previous slide. So uh, the definition of these virtual switches is defined like this in the protobuf file. So here you can see we, we mentioned what images would run on each of those containers. And then uh, these links between these virtual switches become the data ports for those virtual switches. And then we enable certain set of services on the management port. So now, uh, if you see this Alpine virtual switch, we have two images. One is the switch stack image, which is Alpine VS. And this vendor data is the, where the data plane container runs. And uh, this is uh, the default implementation of data plane, which we use for Alpine. And I'll pass on to Daniel to talk further about the data plane and the testing. Thanks, Sonica. Um, so I'm gonna talk about Lucius, which is our virtual data plane for Alpine. Now there's a few things to note about Lucius. The only goal is to enable testing. So this is not trying to uh, simulate a real ASIC. It's not trying to be high performance. Its main goal is so that we can test everything above the data plane. We actually really don't care too much about the data plane when we're talking about this kind of testing. Um, so to give a little bit more about Lucius, it's an open source software data plane. It's written in Go, um, it's lightweight. It's programmed um, using Psy over a gRPC protocol. I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like and why we did that. And finally, as we mentioned earlier, it's packaged um, as a Docker container. So now there's three things to note here. Um, 
there's the size server component, and this is a gRPC server implementation of an API that looks very much like Psy. Then there's the CPU port. This is how we send packets to and from the data plane to inside the VM. And finally, there's the packet processing engine. This here is responsible for processing packets between the different ports and sending traffic around. So to talk a little bit more about the design, the packet processing engine is composed of three different pieces. There are ports, which are interfaces for an interface for reading and writing packets, and they also define the initial actions uh, that the packets take through the pipeline. Um, in the KNE case, we're using VETH pairs to connect different nodes together. So the port is actually just using a standard Linux networking device. Uh, next, we have tables. Uh, match action tables are fairly standard in the networking world, uh, and we have different types of tables like exact match and longest prefix. And these tables match uh, against packet metadata or headers and then re result in certain actions. Uh, these actions include things like updating packet metadata, dropping packets, or looking up in other tables. And we combine all these three pieces to create a flexible forwarding pipeline. We're mostly focused on L3 processing uh, for our use case. So we can do IP routing as, as the main thing we're targeting here. The next piece is the size server. So this is a gRPC server implementation. And it can really be thought of as uh, translating the side calls into table entry modifications. So almost all of the result of a uh, creating a request, so a side call to create a something, like a route, uh, results in inserting a new table entry into uh, the, the specific table that's needed for that call, um, routing or the fib in this case. And finally, the last piece we need is, because of our somewhat complicated architecture of having two containers running um, in a pod and then a VM running in one of those containers, we needed a way to send packets from the data plane to the CPU. And we did this by using a bidirectional gRPC stream. So packets run, there's a packet handler that runs inside the VM that receives packets from the data plane, and it can also send packets back to the data plane over gRPC. Again, this is all fine because we don't really care too much about performance. Um, so this is sufficient for our use case. So now I want to talk a little bit about our approach to Psy. I think this is uh, one of the interesting things we came up with in solving this problem. One, it makes the lib Psy that we bundle into the VM be agnostic to whatever the data plane is. It's really a standard API that we've made um, possible to communicate over gRPC. And uh, secondly, the Psy API that we've generated is actually entirely generated from the metadata of the Psy API. So it is basically um, exactly equivalent with a few transformations I, we made to make it a little bit more user friendly. So we'll notice here that what we've, we've done is that all of the Psy calls usually take an attribute list. And these attribute lists are then um, a combination of an enum and a value. And what we've done is we've unpacked that list into a single message so that all of the types and the fields are inlined into a single protobuf message. And we've also parsed the metadata to make sure that uh, attributes that are read only do not appear in create or modify requests. So in fact, each request type only has the exact right attributes that are needed for uh, the specific um, API. Now I want to talk about the most important part, which is testing. This is the entire goal of the project, um, just to remind everyone, is that we want to test everything above the data plane. So, and how do we do that? Well, first I'm going to talk about how we test the data plane. Um, one of the benefits of writing this data plane was that we were able to do a lot of optimizations around iteration and development time. That our primary goal here is that the data plane is easy to develop on and then we can quickly iterate and add new features to it. So what we've done is we developed a test framework that allows us to run multiple instances of Lucius and traffic generators in a single process. So because of that, we can compile and rebuild the data plane and run a test in under a minute. Because all we're doing is linking together the data plane um, and the traffic generator into a single test binary, and then we can run traffic between the tests. So the traffic generator we're using is an open source one called Magna. It's a lightweight implementation of a OTG, which is a traffic generator protocol. 
and it supports a few features that we need for our testing. And we use channels to connect ports, so we're not using any Linux network devices. The whole test runs purely in user space, and this allows us to have very repeatable, reliable tests that are also very lightweight. These are run in, you know, a, as a unit test, basically, but still bring up multiple instances of a data plane and traffic generators and, and all of that, all in a single process. Um, next, I'm going to talk about the meat of the uh, testing that we do. So our end-to-end -end testing is where we actually bring up two full instances of our Alpine nodes and test them using a PINs infrastructure test. Uh, so the, the tests work by having a test vector, which is a, a text file, that contains table entries, which are P4 entries that we program onto the dot switch, and also test packets and their expected output. So the test packets uh, would include the full packet data, and then what the behavior of the switch is supposed to do. Is the switch supposed to drop the packet? Is it supposed to forward it? Or is it supposed to punt it back to the CPU? Um, and the key to the thing to note about these tests is that we are actually pushing very close to production config on these devices, which means that we get a high confidence that uh, our testing is actually useful and realistic. So I'm going to walk through a little bit more about the different um, flows here. So in our test runner, uh, which reads our packet test vector, we then have different flows that we all configure using P4RT. So that's where we can see that there's actually a um, path using P4RT to connect to both the control switch and the dot switch. The dot switch gets the configuration from the test vector, and the control switch gets a static configuration that simply sends all of the packets uh, to the CPU port. And now, uh, once we have that configuration applied to the devices, we actually use the control switch as our traffic generator. So in the previous example, we used Magna here, which is actually using one of our switches as a, as a traffic generator. So we're using P4RT to inject the packets into the data plane. And the packets will then, will always get transmitted to the, the DUT switch. Once the packets arrive to the DUT switch, there are a few different things that can happen. Either the packet gets forwarded out another port and back to the control switch, and that would be the forwarding case. The other, um, thing that can happen is the packets are dropped, so the, pa the data plane just drops those packets as needed. And finally, packets can also get punted to the CPU port, in which case they will go bit back to the test runner for uh, analysis. And once all the uh, configured test vectors are applied, we actually check all of the packets that we received and match them against the expected behavior. And this gets us a very a high fidelity um, way of testing the devices, because we've actually run the exact same test vectors on our hardware switches and our virtual switches and confirmed that the behavior is equivalent. So once we've done that baseline, now we have confidence that our virtual switch is behaving like hardware, and we can now use that to reliably test um, in a much more lightweight way. Now I'm going to hand it back to Sonica to talk about some final notes. Thank you, Daniel. So uh, looking back, back at all the components which we talked about, so we wanted to call out uh, that most of those components are open source. So here, if you see this gray box is the Alpine virtual switch, which really comprises of two major parts, which is one is the Sonic software, which runs inside the VM, inside the green container. Uh, so, which is completely open source. Then uh, the Lucius data plane implementation, which Daniel uh, talked in detail about, that is also an open source uh, implementation. Now, to stick them all together, there are certain pieces which we call at Alpine VS, which we will be upstreaming soon. Uh, then the deployment and test framework, k &E we already talked about. It is a Google's uh, open source tool. And Ondatra is also one of the test framework developed by Google. Uh, in terms of the test, we, we use a regular Sonic test. Uh, we have so, uh, some of our own SDN test and Sonic management test, and of course the component tests. So now circling back to the goals which we had set, uh, this is a, a summary of uh, or a snapshot of where we are in terms of achieving those goals with Alpine. So we wanted a virtual switch with a data plane uh, so to cover more and more use cases. So we got that uh, with Alpine and Lucius uh, data plane implementation. So we are able to run the similar number of uh, test packet vectors uh, the way we uh, Daniel explained in the uh, 
testing uh, uh, testing slides. So we are able to run similar number of uh, test vectors as we do on the hardware. In terms of the end-to-end -end integration test, we have enabled about 20% of our total tests, uh, and more are getting added. In terms of accelerated software delivery, since we use KNE and GCE, we are able to limit the runtime of our all our tests in under one hour by running multiple VM, multiple deployments in parallel. And, and hence, we are also able to run these tests every two hours, which is not really possible with hardware uh, limitations. Then in terms of reduction in dependence of on expensive hardware, we, since we use it on GCE VMs, uh, we, we can deploy a test bed, a fully functional test bed in under 10 minutes, which is again very uh, hardware uh, capacity dependent. And in terms of scale, since we use Kubernetes and KE and cloud, we, in, in theory, uh, theory we get infinite capacity. Uh, with Alpine, we have not yet deployed a fabric level test bed, but KE does provide, has demonstrated up to 150 to 200 uh, virtual switches in the emulated topology, uh, which is very hard to achieve, achieve with the uh, hardware uh, test beds. In terms of interconnect uh, of vendor switches, uh, we, there are two parts of it. One is replaceable uh, data plane implementation, which is achieved by designing Alpine virtual switch in the way we did uh, by replacing the container. And in terms of interconnect of multiple vendor switches, that is provided to us by KE uh, in a simple topology file where we can connect different types of uh, uh, virtual switches in the same topology. So uh, that's all for the presentation. These are some of the call to action. We are going to be uh, starting a working group soon where uh, in the Sonic community where we would uh, discuss more about uh, simulation and a common framework to deploy uh, such emulated uh, uh, switches. And uh, we also wanted to evaluate interest in adopting this proto buffet SI approach which Daniel talked about. And feel free to reach out uh, to us for any questions and feedback. Yeah, we can take some questions now if you have. Hi, just a quick question. Um, have you guys uh, upstreamed the, the test cases and the tests that you talked about? Yes, um, most of them are. Uh, there are some internal ones, but yeah, most of the tests are upstreamed. Yeah, so just uh, one question, like say you have, you want to like uh, with a production like uh, configuration, so I assume that you could have each container could have a 128 port. How do you connect in those port if you want to based on topology, like uh, you're using OES or those things from host point of view? So we can connect, um, our current topologies connect 256 ports between the two dots, um, which is close to our specific hardware that we're using. Um, as for specific port types, that is not something we're currently um, supporting. It's something we're interested in looking at how we can emulate um, incorrect mismatches. So for example, if you have the wrong number of lanes or the wrong port speeds, these ports should not come up in our simulation. Currently they do, but it's something we're evaluating on how we can actually achieve that. Um, and this is where the benefit of having a data plane that's only used for testing is really big because we can implement whatever sort of behavior we want there in terms of bringing up ports that don't mismatch what, what the behavior should be and we can then test against that. No, my question is more like say how your port get connected to running the traffic. So we use KNE for that and in the topology file, you can define as many links as you want between the nodes and the underlying technology of the links is depends on whether or not you're running a multiple Kubernetes node cluster or not. But we're usually running single node clusters, and so we can use VEATs to connect the two nodes together. Okay, thanks. <laughs>